but hopefully we don't hit our heads and we both have very long lifespans. Because on this week's episode of Game Chat Tonight with the Huber Rebels, we're going to talk about the Switch's longest lifespan for any Nintendo console, PS5 Pro, and a few other things. Uh, my name is Ethan. My name is Jordan. This is going to be episode number 14. Uh, got a whole bunch of random little things to talk about here. But did you see that the console that we both went, what feels like yesterday, to pick up at midnight, uh, the latest Switch console, is now, it now has the longest lifespan of any Nintendo console ever. I did see that. Does it feel like yesterday to you? It does. Really? Both. Like, it's that thing where, like, I go down the list of everything that's happened, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. But also, I still vividly remember Breath of the Wild feeling unbelievable, even though I've already now almost nearly 100% of its sequel. Successor, was, yeah. Like, the longest gap between any Zelda games. Like, yeah, the numbers all, I understand the numbers. Right. I can explain the numbers. But I think because we're still on the Switch, it makes it not feel as long. For sure. Did, I forget, Breath of the Wild came out at launch or no? Day one. Day, Day one. one, okay. Because I was going to say, what did I get to play? Because I went and, and got it with you, but I don't know what game. It was Odyssey that you said did not launch with it, right? No, that came out in November. Yeah. So, yeah. I remember that. I I more remember playing 1 2 Switch and I remember yes. accidentally putting the bumper thing on your Joy-Con incorrectly like the first <laughs> night and I was mortified. Um that was that was hilarious cuz I just I remember how yeah, how terrified you were. <laughs> And I didn't really care, but I wanted I wanted to play it up at the same time. I I definitely thought you cared, and I would have cared honestly. I wouldn't have blamed you, but that that yeah. thing was stuck. I don't know how it as stuck as it was. I don't know how it came off not broken. It was it was stuck because we didn't understand how much force it took. It wasn't actually that stuck. Sure, right. Right, that first time of like, oh my god, this isn't coming. And then realizing, like, even to take them off normally, you kind of have to use a lot of force. Yeah. Um, so, the actual number of days that this thing, since it came out, so this is March 3rd to, I guess, technically July 11th, so we can add a little bit more to that, but 2,687 days, which overtakes the Super Nintendo by one, no, no. which overtakes the NES to Super Nintendo by one day, which was 2,686 days, 1983 to 1990. Wow. All of that before we were born. <laughs> Both of us. It's just, I think it's kind like of funny that in all of this time, give or take a little bit, I, I imagine it passed you know it became number one you know by by seven days now or whatever but every cycle has been you know about seven years like that's always just kind of been the thing going back to the nes to the snes like that was seven years and we're still in kind of a seven year generational cycle i think that's funny that that hasn't really changed yeah that is that is kind of crazy considering all the technological advancements that still seems to be the sweet spot yeah um it is it is so if we go through these so the first two from the color tv game 1977 until the famicom or the nes these are technically the japanese time frames um but they roughly line up 1983 in that time video games died like they literally were like the industry is dead and gone uh, games like E.T. came out, which are famously filled up landfills. Just the low effort. Was the, the, the Famicom, is that the Japanese NES? Yes. 
I never knew about that. I just saw it and heard about it recently. This thing is very cool. It looks like a yeah. Star Tours ship, and I love it. It's clean. It's yeah. Japanese. Everything is was usually better. Um, but people also have soft spots for the like Super Nintendo American version. I obviously the NES American version was like the first one I ever played. So I have a soft spot for that, even though it's like, kind of chunky. They wanted to make it what? Well, then the Super Famicom is hideous. Oh, you don't like it? No, the Famicom very cool. Super does not look cool. You think the Super Nintendo American looks better? I agree. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Look at look at the Super Famicom controller because that's what people uh, usually reference as liking. The Super the, color the controller for both kind of look almost identical. It seems right. Same design, but the the Super Famicom has like the colored full buttons, buttons. whereas the the Super Famicom it's the like the four colors. Right. Both on the console and that, and the American is the purple and gray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. NES came out in 1983. It lasted for over seven years until the Super NES came out in 1990. Then the Super Nintendo ruled for about six years until the N64 goaded console came out. And that was kind of the era we came in, into into games. Right. Uh, and then it's it's crazy to think, like, what came before that and then what we've experienced after that. So, in 64, only five years. Feels like the longest five years ever, though. Like, just relatively speaking. Until the GameCube came out. And I don't know. If, do you remember? So, well, I guess, do you remember when the N64 came out? No. Do you remember that era? Uh, the only reason I remember that is because they were at McDonald's. To me, the mm -hmm, N64 mm -hmm. feel, feels ancient. Like, okay. it feels... you didn't have one, right? No. Did you ever go over to somebody's house and see a Super Nintendo? Uh, no. I've... I've never known someone that had either of those. I know you guys have had them. You and Maya had them, but like... I don't ever remember going to someone's house that had either of those. N64s, yes, but I don't remember playing them before you. Interestingly <laughs> enough, so my friend, his dad had gotten the NES. So I played Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt. Those are the only two games that I remember even touching from that. He never had a Super Nintendo. So that was a massive blind spot for me. And then they got, like, a PlayStation, which I believe came out before the N64. Yeah. And then and I didn't I didn't get that. They had the PlayStation, but then I got the N64. And, God, it was just always, like... Like, I would get an N64 tattoo. Yeah. That N, that, like, three-dimensional N, like... Yeah. And it's just crazy. The... So, okay. So, 96 to 2001. 2001, the GameCube comes out. Do you remember the GameCube coming out? Of course. That, either that or the PS2 was my first console. I feel like it was the PS2. But yeah, I had a GameCube. And what year did that come out, you said? 2000? 2001? So, t dude, three days after 9-11. No. Yeah, but two years before. Wait, no. Yeah, no. September 14th, 2001. Wow. Three days after 9-11. That wow. I don't. No, correspond at me all. neither. I don't even um, know if I got it right away. I it I it might have been a couple years until I got a GameCube. So I, you mentioned the N sixty fours in McDonald's. I do yeah. remember N sixty fours like in Toys R Us and stuff, and going and like demoing games before they came out. Yes, I don't remember doing that for GameCube though, but. My same friend, who had all these other ones, somehow he missed the N64. He got a game, like, at launch, I remember. And I remember him getting Super Smash Bros. Melee, which I think was a launch game, but I also could be wrong. No, November. So it came out a couple months later. Okay. So I'm pretty sure he got one when Smash Bros. Melee came out. And, man, that was... 
that time just felt like the future. That I still have a soft spot for the GameCube. The GameCube oh. is the console that I think I wanted the most and never got. You never had one. I got I got there through a roundabout way, but like when I moved to India, yeah, two of my friends had GameCubes, and that was how I experienced it, and I experienced it a good amount. Um, but I at all this time, and I had a PS2, so it's not like I was had nothing. Yeah. But oh my god, I wanted to I wanted to play Sunshine. I wanted to play Wind Waker, Metroid Prime, Mario Kart. Um, the the funny the thing one? is, like, I don't even Nailed know it. what I played on my NBA GameCube Street. all that much. Luigi's Mansion. Yeah, duh. NASCAR. Of course, yes. Luigi's Mansion. I probably NASCAR. played NASCAR on PlayStation. Really? Okay. I don't think I would have wanted. I would not want to play on a GameCube with those weird L two R two buttons that like push in and get stuck. Bro, weird. For for a the racing thing, game, yes. The thing about the GameCube was their um, analog, so you could act. It was like accurate. How much you were like pushing it in? Extra really? Level of precision. It would know yeah, how much of it was so, pushed. That's what's so special about the GameCube triggers. Yeah. Okay, so sure, similar to so, PS4 and PS5 triggers, right? Which I don't know if those are analog or simulated or not. I just remember people wanted them right. to bring that back. For... But there's still just something about the pushing it in, not like the. Not like yeah. this, where like, it's like it's like a rounded kind of pull, you know, yeah. and and the click, which I I did not like. I I wouldn't I wouldn't have played a racing game, but I played a lot of Sonic and Luigi's Mansion. I feel like those are the only two I can remember. But the thing about my GameCube is that I when I wasn't playing it anymore, I gave it to my friend who didn't have any consoles, and I mean he was oh, someone I, I would have continued seeing for a long time. Like it's not like. Yeah. I was saying goodbye to it, but years later, I asked him if he still played it, and he said no. And I was like, "Can I get that thing back?" And he still had everything. He had the game, the or the console, the controllers, and the games. I was like, "Oh, thank God!" Like I just wanted it back in my possession. You got it all back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. What color do you have? Silver. Oh, I kind of wish one of us had a different color because I also have a silver one. Yeah, the purple's probably. So while. I mean, so I'm happy with the silver one because it's clean. Do you have it right there? No way. No, I I got this because of how much I oh, love. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The purple GameCube, but yep. I never had one. I love that. So I my friend had a purple one in India. Um, I do like the silver one. I think that other than the purple one aged the best. There's like black and orange and stuff. But orange. My grandpa got a GameCube. My grandparents and did too. From his daughter with the NASCAR game. This is this is why you said that because I think we've talked about this and yes, my grandparents also had a NASCAR game, but either on a PS2 or the GameCube. But for some reason, crazy. they had both. But yeah, it's funny how we have that like that parallel with our grandparents. That's no, it's it's. Nintendo consoles and older people getting them have such a fascinating history. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, so I played it in the, every summer. Every summer when I would come home, I would play Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2. Hell yeah. And probably NASCAR and I don't know, maybe something else. But that was, um, that's how I got a GameCube and I still have it now. And it's very cherished. And I actually, um, so the GameCube 2001, similar to the N64, it was around for five years uh, before the Wii came out in 2006, which also feels like an eternity. Um, I was cleaning up some of the few boxes that I still had left to unpack 
here and i'm like trying to find where everything is i finally found where everything is but i got both my wii and my gamecube out i didn't hook them up but i got them all cleaned up and all the consoles are now in one box together <laughs> cool i love that so that i can get to them if i need to yeah I love how it's so funny how it's such a short span of time between the GameCube. To the United States of America. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, former President Donald Trump has joined us. <laughs> and that's what happens when you pause cable and then yeah. it runs out of recording time. It and says, suddenly fuck unpauses. you, no longer. I couldn't tell what that was at first, and I heard, United States of America. I'm like, oh, he's here. Pause, because um, he said Hannibal Lecter was a great man, <laughs> and I did, didn't really understand what I was hearing, and I had not, to pause it to be like, did, did this just happen? Not that he said sensical things before, but is that post getting shot, or before? Yeah, this was tonight, I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was hoping maybe... Would, get, I was hoping the bullet might have like made things in his brain work better, possibly, but I, I think it has a little bit, I'm hoping. But that was yeah, that was next level. I'm sorry. You were saying. Um The span of time from the GameCube to the Wii seems pretty short considering how big of a technological leap it was. Like Uh how so? Well, to go to motion control, uh, not that that hasn't been a thing. I know that motion control, that kind of scanning, like no, no, whatever no. point break or whatever those games are called is time oh. crisis. That stuff has existed, but like in such a pretty accurate at home model it was a pretty big jump. I would say from the GameCube, which is a wired, there was a wireless controller. I understand, but I don't know. I just feel like that's that's a big upgrade. Dude, take take me back to 2006. I I do want to say the Wii was pretty much just a GameCube in terms of internal tech, and this performance. Was, so, with the, with N64 and the GameCube, Nintendo was chasing power. Still, they were trying to win by having the most power, the best graphics, et cetera, et cetera. They thought the GameCube was like literally a beast. At launch was uh, the Star Wars game, Rogue Squadron 2, Rebel Leader, I want to say. That game was gorgeous. It uh, arguably still holds up. Um, so the Wii was really just like, it kind of already had something powerful. And then that was the decision of we're not chasing power anymore. And so they just went out of left field and decided to do motion controls, which, oh my god, I mean, that, I said earlier, future, that felt like the future, like that, like, what a jump, like, oh my yeah. god, what are we doing? Yeah. I just, you move it, and uh, I just, actually, that just reminded me, I saw a really funny clip of real people playing tennis like we tennis. And okay. maybe just re remember how hilarious Wii Tennis was. I don't just, remember like, that as much as golf. And, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just the spazziness. I've seen real people play tennis like that. Dude, it made me want to play. Like, I want to hook like, up all Wii Sports and we play so bad and play all those things. Taylor and I have been playing real tennis lately. It's fun. Playing what? Oh, actual tennis. Yeah. Oh, it's like there's a game called Real Tennis. Real Tennis. That was, that was my thought. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you play? Is this a new thing? Relatively new, yeah. Last month or two. And this is a game. We can talk about that on Game Chat tonight. Exactly, yeah. No, but uh, yeah, I, I don't remember We Tennis that much. I would like to try that. That's awesome. We're not, there's we should, baseball. We should, uh, mm -hmm. Golf, bowling. Three point shooting. No, that's resort. I know. I played I resort more I though. I I need to. I wonder if you can. I wonder how much that is to get. When so when when did you get a Wii? Do you remember? I got it for Christmas. Uh, it might have been the Christmas. When did it come out? What month? November nineteenth, two thousand six. I want you to. I want you to see if your if your parents remember it. Well, 
This I, thing, you could not get it. I know. It was sold out everywhere. And I'm sure I have told the story, so I'm not going to tell the story in depth, but I lucked out at a Best Buy and I got one while I was home visiting for Christmas. Yeah, I think I got it that that year. I don't remember because what? I, that would have been seventh grade when I got it. Otherwise, I don't think that's the case. Yeah. Si- sixth grade is when I bought my PS3 for myself. So whatever. I remember I remember my mom being on the phone with her brother and in like the other room. And I remember her saying that she got the Wii. And I just looked at my dad and he's like, and I just like pretended like I didn't hear that. But yeah, I, I got it for Christmas. And my grandparents also had a Wii. I don't know, again, what they were doing with it, but they also had a Wii. Um, Why not? Wii Fit. Nope. <laughs> also, the hand controls were much less uh, understandable to my grandparents, I think. <laughs> Very spazzy. Yeah. And just like buttons. Yeah. No, they they used it for the weather channel and for We News. We News <laughs> and voting. They voted on their favorite. Oh, I polls. loved that. Yeah. <sighs> Dude, I wish it was still alive. It's so sad. This is a walk down Memor We Lane. Hey, get it. <laughs> we up in here. We and you. Yep. This, I almost know nothing about, weirdly. Even though I was very much alive and cognizant during it. And that's what's so crazy. So the Wii Wii was about, was six years. So a little bit longer than the GameCube. Now, I'll be honest. So 2006 to 2012. That took me from high school, like ninth grade. 10th grade of high school yeah 2006 would have been uh freshman year christmas for me yeah and then i must have taken it back and i i oh i think it was like spring break that following spring is all i did was play twilight princess and it was epic yeah when the wii u came out i was then in my fourth year of college wow which i see kids now talk about like things like oh my god i was in this and now i'm and i'm all it's so and i'm just like i've just been working yeah like since the switch came out like (laughs) i've just been working like nothing has really changed i got married i guess but they're like i was in second grade and now i'm in college this is insane <laughs> something like, thing like that right and i'm just like shut up you kids um but yeah another six years the wii u came out and everyone was confused <laughs> including you still to this day yeah <laughs> i think i like, remember playing it at your house once i don't remember that thing at all yeah i wasn't gonna get one I was in college. I had other things to do. I didn't get it until probably 2015. I would I would think probably 2014 or 2015 I didn't get one. And I waited, and I only got it for one reason. Kind of two reasons, but one reason, and that was for Zelda. I was like, yeah. it showed off, I think, the like prototype of Breath of the Wild, and I was like, I don't care, I'm going to get this, because I, I need to play whatever that Zelda game is. Not like, knowing that, that looks it would also come out on the... S- what would be the switch yes yeah because that's crazy the breath of the wild came out on wii u as well yeah for i forget that yeah that it was a cross launch game and that it runs on it as well um because that was the wii u was their first hd console that was the jump for wii u which is kind of crazy like they needed to make that jump i think they had some issues with it obviously the branding was not great um their ceo took a pay cut because Nintendo fell to its lowest value in its history. Wow. Um, it went from its highest high with the Wii. Yeah. To its lowest low with the Wii U. Yikes. And people were like, Nintendo's done. They need to become a third-party publisher like Sega. They're like with 
after the Dreamcast, which is dumb because people don't know what they're talking about. Um, in retrospect, obviously, that did not come to pass uh, because it was only around for four years and four months. Is that the shortest? One th- 1,566 days. It's the shortest by over 300 days. Okay. The GameCube had the next shortest, and the GameCube also struggled. Although, I still hold to this day, GameCube has the most banger library ever. Um, yeah, I feel like and the that GameCube was only slight... is... Huh? I feel like the GameCube's pretty good. Yeah. It, I don't know why it would have struggled can... to sell. It confused people because that was during the time when, like, it wasn't cool enough. It was like this cute little box with a handle. Yeah. And it was going up against the PlayStation 2. Right. Um, and so the Wii U, um, the Wii U lived and died so that the Switch could thrive. Could sprint. And thrive it did. Um, and so we got the switch now seven years ago, over 2,687 days ago. And by the time the next one comes out, it'll be like eight years. Yeah. It's going to be nearly. Yeah. It's a thousand over a thousand over 1100 more days than the Wii U. (laughs) It will be close to double. That's crazy. Now that I'm looking at this, it, it like, just, it'll be almost double. It just prints money, though. You know, like, yeah, it, it is so perfect that they can just keep releasing anything every single month until the next Switch comes out. They'll just be like, hey, here's this. And people will be like, cool, let's play it on my Switch. Here's a dock for your controllers. Cool. Yeah. Like, we we just went through the list of home consoles. This doesn't also include all of the stuff they were doing with the Game Boy. Yeah. And the DS. And the 3DS. All along this time. And the DS was their, like, number one selling console. Because they had, like, four of them. Yeah. And this, I mean... I know there's a cost difference, but, like, this almost makes the, the DS irrelevant, I would think, right? With it being it so portable. 100% does. Yeah. It, it, I, so, I joined Reddit to follow rumors about the Nintendo NX. NX, right. I, I thought it was Nexus, yeah. This, this, this is one of the happiest times of my life. I'm not even going to lie. Was the the like oh my god Nintendo's gonna come back and they're gonna merge their con- like handheld and console and we're gonna get all of these games that are split across uh, handheld and console where there's not enough over there and there's not enough over there and like these aren't up to par and this is a, like it's gonna be all on one and everything's gonna be focused yeah like what is this gonna be it I believe from day one people thought I worked for Nintendo. When I was like explaining this thing, uh, I was so excited, and I still—that's why I still can't believe it's been seven years because it feels like yesterday that like this excitement was coming. And this long end, it has fully delivered. Yeah, I think it's just off the mark of passing the PS2 for the highest selling console of all time. It is officially number two. It will 100% be number one. And the rumors are that I don't even know if it's going to be a Switch 2. What will it be? I don't. I don't know. A Switch I know Pro Pro. About it, but like, yeah, kind of. Which isn't a bad thing. Right. Yeah, we have talked about that. What would make it a Switch 2? Is, is I think the discussion that we had. Yeah, and they have they haven't said that it will be a Switch too. I I want it to be so bad though. That's why I want it to be the Super yeah. Switch. That's what I want. Yeah, because Just call it that. A two means it's you know a whole new iteration, but there's Switch Pro, and then Super Switch is just above that. It's just the next level above Pro. I think Super Switch would be awesome. 
Yeah, I don't know what they're And to throw it. back to the SNES, you know? Yeah, which I think they're also scared of. But there's no way this thing flops. It's going to be perfect. They know what they're doing. They're not... The, the, I think the core of why it's not a huge change is, like, they're not messing up what they have going. They're not like, right. all right, it's not the Switch thing. Because, like, why would you change it? Why would you change a handheld console that can dock? Like, why complicate that again? You have found the final form of Nintendo. Yeah. Also, I mean, not that we have any doubt that they're going to change it that drastically, but people have seen it, you know? Like, it has been seen and been used. So, like, if it was that different, it I think it would have somehow come out. I, I feel The like. rumors are the only way that people have interacted with it is, like, a closed box that you stick your arms in. Oh, really? <laughs> That's really? what I've heard. Like, they're going hardcore with this, yeah. Okay. All right. That's funny. But do you do you think we'll hear about it by the end of the year? The Switch yes. came out in March of 2017, but we got a trailer for it, I want to say, in, like, between September and November. Yeah, the year I, w- I would think, a, you know, a direct in... November or something like that. It wasn't a direct though. It was just a trailer that really just dropped. Yeah. And it was then enough. And it was the guy in his house with Switch, Breath of the Wild, and it was just just poetry. Yeah. I, I just they're never gonna reach that again. That's okay. Dude it, th- Smash came out one year into this thing yeah and we were there that's how fresh the console was at the time it doesn't feel that old i think we, mario kart 8 came out what the for wii the wii u yeah yeah i'm ready that's crazy i'm, I'm very ready i need the yeah. new one it's been while as impressive as this is, it's time. It's time. I'm excited to get some fresh uh, hardware. A new Switch. Yeah. A new PS5, maybe. Another Xbox. Maybe is a big question. <laughs> Why? Because Tom Henderson said maybe the PS5 Pro won't come out this year. Does that mean that it's not? No. Is my gut saying it won't? Yeah. And what? Delayed till February, maybe? Next year. Yeah. I don't know. They can't push it too far, because otherwise it becomes less... Then just give us PS6. Right. Like, the the less you split it in the middle, the less people might be inclined to spend that money. There's no Xbox mid-cycle refresh, though. So right. why? I mean, I'll buy one. You'll buy one. Are they? Are they? Why not? Do, yeah. Is it not good to release one and Xbox doesn't? Does that make you look better, or is it pointless money to spend on hardware? That's what I'm afraid of. Is like it's just it's too expensive for them and not worth it because people can just buy the regular one and just deal with whatever that is. Can you just not make that many and see what the demand is and then make more? I don't know. I don't know enough about how production works. and But it's also strategy. It's image. Like, you don't want to put something out that fails. Although, they don't seem to be able to miss. The PS Pro Portal is still, like, sold out everywhere and it's been super successful. The VR is right. not as That's good. the thing. The VR isn't successful and also they're fine, you know? But... yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it happening, be right? Enough. They're not going to scrap it, it entirely. To. There's too much stuff that's come out. There's right. There's just way too much stuff that's come out. So I mean, I don't, I don't think we'll anyone would condemn them for not releasing it. You know, like, no one shamed Naughty Dog for not releasing The Last of Us online or whatever that live service game was. You know, they're like, it's not what we thought it was going to be. It's not what we wanted. And people are like, all right, cool. Like, good for you for not just shoving something off there for no reason so 
if PlayStation said the same thing, they're like, we don't think this is a good idea. It's not necessary. Then I think I would hope the most part people would be like, all right, cool. We'll see you in three and a half years for the PS6. What are we at with that? We're coming up on four. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be three years. It's got to be 27. PS6 in 2026. Maybe they just wait and do two years. We'll see. Because uh, we'll Xbox will release because their like, handheld before the next console. So, like, that's going to kind of shake is, things up. What is happening? <laughs> There's so much stuff now. We're going to get an Xbox handheld. We might get another PlayStation portable Vita thing. That's I'm what they need to it. focus I want on. more. This, I think 2024 might be the saddest year in games ever, which is ridiculous to say. Because 2023 was off the chain and 2025 is going to be crazy. Yeah. Yeah, this year's sad. There's not really a lot happening. <laughs> Xbox did good. There, there is stuff happening. It's just more like the vibe. Right. Just is kind of off. Everybody's like, hold your ground. Also, inflation. I don't know. Maybe that's having a playing a role in it. Um, but there's... There's also lots of other stuff happening, like uh, Fortnite and No Man's Sky updates. So uh, we'll take a quick break and then talk about that in just a minute. If you like what we do, we'd really appreciate if you'd consider supporting us on Patreon. Now more than ever, small independent teams need all the help they can get, and we'd love to have you join the rebellion. Joining us on Patreon can get you a wide array of perks, starting with our one star tier. Joining this tier will get you voting rights for Movie Madness, our weekly journey through an actor's entire filmography. Our two star tier will give you extended episodes of the Huber Rebels podcast, Game Chat Tonight, and Movie Madness, both ad free and a day early. Plus, you can write into those shows for a chance to have your questions and comments read on the podcast. The three star tier delivers the most value with our Patreon exclusive shows. You will get a monthly episode of Crossword Struggle and Climbing the Ranks. And we have more exclusive shows planned to add even more value to this tier. Next, as a four star rebel, your name will be listed in an on screen shout out on each of our weekly scheduled shows. Finally, you can be one of only 24 people to be considered a Founding Rebel. You will receive a limited edition Founding Rebel t-shirt. Your name will be read on each of our shows as a Founding Rebel, and you will forever be remembered as one of the very few people to truly help start the rebellion. Visit patreon.com slash Huber Rebels for more information. Thank you so much for your support, and back to the show. Welcome back. Uh, thanks for immediately going over and subscribing to our Patreon. We really support support the help. Support ourselves. We really ourselves. appreciate the support. It helps us a lot. Um, and also like and uh, comment on this video if Share. you enjoy or hate what we're talking about. Such as Fortnite Reload. Have you played it? Have you played it? We played it. We did play it. We gave it a little test run. I was very excited for it. I saw the trailer and I was like, oh my god, yes, this is everything I've been wanting out of Fortnite lately. Because really since Chapter 5, I've been pretty out. But definitely the last season or two, we have not played. Chapter 4, chapter four we all were playing a ton and I was loving it. But I which, fell which off hard. That? The characters. What characters? Yeah. That's how I remember the seasons. The characters, who, who did I don't know. Want? That's when we were dropping at the racetrack. Oh, now I'm sad. That's my second, almost first favorite era of playing Fortnite. Like, I had a lot of fun when yeah. we were doing that. That was um, really good. But, yeah, usually when there's a new map, I'm pretty taken out, and I've just been, I've been pretty turned off of Fortnite since. But Reload is small new small map with points of interest from the first map which is very cool like tilted towers uh retail row uh what else loot lake i think is in there somewhere um but it's a resurgence game mode which people might know from warzone which means if you die you will respawn in like 20 seconds as long as some of your teammates are alive. And that continues to happen until towards the end of the game when respawning gets turned off. 
Um, there's all like OG weapons. There's no crazy traversal items or weapons or anything like that. It's just kind of pure high paced Fortnite, and I was very excited for it. So we tried it out, and it was chaotic. <laughs> it was a lot of sweaty people. Yeah, but I had a lot of fun. I, I did too. Very down to play it again. And I well, think we almost won. Yes, we did. We got second place once or twice. We mm-hmm. definitely got third, I think. So we we did decent. Um, I, I was proud of us. I I need to play because I think maybe right now or starting tomorrow, the Jack Sparrow oh. mini pass comes out. Yes. And I need to do yeah, that. I, wanna, I have to do that. I want to do that too. The How other characters are already play, out. You know? uh, David Jones... Barbosa and Elizabeth are already out. I don't really need them. I definitely don't need to spend the money on them, but like I don't even really want to play as them, but I need Jack. How long will it be? Yeah. I don't know. I would hope at least two weeks. Is this part of the battle pass? No, it should be its own thing. Like it should be like the Darth free? Maul and no, you probably have to pay for it. It's a it's a mini battle pass, is what I've heard. Okay. 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 I'll look into it. I'll see what the options are. I will need to be playing to work my way through that. And whether that's, uh, what's it called? Reload or just chapter five gameplay. uh, Maybe we can hop back in a little bit in the next couple weeks. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. Reload overall, not quite what I was expecting, but still fun. And a nice little taste of old Fortnite. I, I like that it's a little simpler because jumping into being like, wait, what is it? Oh, and they have all the attachments now. I even forgot oh, about yeah. that. So it's nice to not have to worry about that. Yeah. Being um, able to have the tack shotgun and the scar again is just simple times. I love it. Perfect. Yeah. We'll definitely jump back in that. And uh, as long as they just keep adding stuff like Fortnite will not go away. It may not be the primary rotation, but I, I don't ever see myself deleting it. No. Is, I guess, how I'd put it. And I would imagine there's such a big player base that they can give everybody what they want. They can give us new maps and new modes, and they can give us old stuff, and there will be enough people to fill all of those lobbies so that everybody's happy. And I keep forgetting, but when they add the Super Disney Island universe, whatever that's going to be, Hopefully that's compelling enough to get in there and yeah, explore that. That'll be exciting. I wonder how long that'll take. Yeah, I feel like that's probably like a 2026 20, at least kind of thing. Yeah, that's probably a safe assumption. Unless it... Like maybe late next year, but probably, yeah. yeah, I think that's safe to say. And you could how... launch in a minimum and grow. Right. I feel like you got to drop a bomb with that, though. Yeah. How do we first see that? Like a Game Awards kind of like announcement? Or because it was just kind of softly announced at what? a Like, what was that? Where did we first hear about that? It, it, it was a Disney thing. Like a Disney earnings uh, call kind of thing or something? Yeah, or some kind of show where they have... Uh, D23 is happening later this year. There is a chance that oh, it could get shown there. Oh, that's a great call. That would be a good place to showcase something like that. But it might be D23 next year. Right. Sure. No, I like that. But we'll see. Hey, Each Disneyland time. lovers. Do you want to live your yeah. own Disneyland life virtually? Here you go. For all the people that don't live near one? Yeah, right. Who don't live in Anaheim and can't buy $69 tickets for the 69th anniversary. When is that? This year, I think. Maybe next year. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's this year. Because next year right? is... Is the birthday? Next year's 70. No, July, I thought. July, yeah. So, like, right now. Yeah, but only for Anaheim residents. No way. Yeah. I, I don't know. In a way, I'm fine with that. I think that's a nice little gift to yesterday to the home city. Yeah. Yesterday was 
the 69th anniversary. Well, nice. I'm going tomorrow, so I will. Uh, that'll have to just count. Oh, you uh, you researching the rides? Yes, I wanted to go <laughs> research the rides in in person um, for our upcoming Disneyland ride rankings episode two of climbing the ranks coming soon and uh i know there's a slight delay because when you're sending the message all the way across the country it takes a little long to hand off a a segment but uh there this yeah like you said this will be our second one and they're very meaty in-depth discussions and definitive like if you're curious about definitive rankings we're going to use four different votes to climb the ranks and Mm -hmm. see who comes out on top yep what's your favorite disney ride will it be our favorite probably not but find out but one other game that i wanted to talk about because it is actually older than the switch funny enough it's on the switch now Hell yeah. Don't know if I ever saw that coming. And just announced the latest update. And I'm talking about No Man's Sky. This game has had an insane journey from announcement to release to everything in between and to today. And this latest trailer, I think, made me go, okay. Now the original vision is achieved. I still don't think that makes me love this game, but I'm happy for them. Do you think it wasn't... I mean... Okay. Vision achieved. It was a success already a while ago, I think, right? 100%. Yeah. yeah, And it has been for a while. So when I say vision achieved, what I remember in... Before the game even came out, when he was talking about it, when it was all those those sound bites and those little pieces that make your brain and your imagination just go wild, you yeah. just think of like, oh my god, this is going to be the greatest thing ever. He said when he was younger, he was living somewhere. I almost want to say he was in Australia, out in the, out back, looking up at the stars, and he was super into like sci-fi books, and they always had like these crazy covers, either comics or books, and. He wanted to make it where, like, you go land on a planet and it's like you're in a cover of these, like, old sci-fi novels or whatever it may be. And just looking at, like, the shots in this latest trailer, like, yeah, they have achieved that. That's so cool. Very different from day one when I loaded up the game and I was like, what is this gray, barren, lifeless blob of a planet? Okay. I'm on, like, a moon. Like... That's okay, but I can't wait to get out of here and go find something cool. And then every single planet was the same and Uh, lame and boring and just not interesting enough. And the game didn't run well. Um, And that's fine. That's just how that's just how it went. But I remember watching you play it a little bit, but I really still have not seen that much of this game. Is there a story at all? There is a story. There's some like weird stuff. I don't really know what all is going on. I've done some stuff. Uh, I always wanted to like find a planet, find a nice view, and build a house and to have a cool base. That was really all I wanted. To yeah. Do. This is the game where like there's the center of the universe that you are like striving towards, right? Yes, I think that's right. Yep. Yeah, I think I want to play this. I think we should. I now that it's and it's also multiplayer. Like yeah. multiplayer literally started where like a blob was in your world, and that was all you could do. Like if you wanted to see another player, Weird. now you can like literally explore together. I'm pretty sure you can customize ships. In this latest update, they're adding atmospheric, so there's going to be clouds, there's going to be weather and wind and waves and oceans and like all kinds of crazy stuff. You can aim creatures and ride them and fly on them and i think there's mechs and i think i don't you can build space stations now maybe you can just live your 
your sci-fi fantasy almost it seems like yeah. which other games I are striving to give us but this is now yeah. and current and beautiful the, i love i've always loved the colors of this game maybe not when it first yeah. came out like you said but this game is stunning every time i see it now yeah so i think we should give it a give it a uh whatever you call it a run yeah is it um, do you know if it's cross progression I don't know because I think I I do have it on my PlayStation, but I would love to. I wonder if I, I don't know. Whatever, I'd love to get it on like the Game Pass and or my Switch as well, so I can kind of keep chipping away at it wherever I am. Only PC and Xbox. Okay. So you'll have to do remote play. I've never done that. It does work. I've never I I need to because I know it's a very viable option for me to play more things more places but I've never tried it. I I feel weird about it not like being streaming but it's supposed to work. I literally when I was going through my stuff I have like a little phone clip thing to put on my dual sense to clip my phone there. I should try it. It just doesn't feel right. That's why I want a portal. Yeah. So is this going to be another like Fallout 76 kind of thing where we're both living our own story and we can just kind of like kind of see each other and like, you so. know, mine things with each other? Okay. So like I should start it on my own and we can just fly around in our ships together sometimes when we feel like it. Yeah. I just can't believe they How keep do you feel? coming out with updates for this game and not charging for them. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's it drives towards overall sales. What's so what's actually crazy about this latest update is they announced a new game. They finally all these after all these years announced a new game. Like no fire. So I was gonna ask. You were talking about how he was talking about this game, whenever it was, and how ambitious it, it sounded. Are you terrified for this new game? The way he talked about it at the game awards, because you hear him talk about it there, and you're like, oh my god, okay. Um, are you sure? Because. <laughs> It took a while to get this game working properly. I think I think they figured it out. I yeah. also think these games are like almost the same. And so I'm not worried. I'm also not going to play it. At so the I moment really I can't care. even remember like what it is, like what the the crux of it it's is that he said a giant planet Earth. Like a oh, super Oh yeah. Earth. One planet rather than a universe where everybody is. But a whole ass planet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not small planets like No Man's Sky. Right. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. And that I does no sound cool to me. Yeah. I like that. These both so. kind of feel like, you know, adult Minecraft to me a little bit. Yeah. In, in a way, which I appreciate. Yeah, I definitely... I want to build a cool base on in No Man's Sky. That would yeah. be fun. Yeah. I'm I'm I'm, I'm super happy for them. The Huber uh, level. I... Yeah. No, congrats to Sean and uh Hello Games. They really pulled it off. I played yeah. one of the, their other games too. The Last Campfire. Great cute little game from one of their small teams. Oh. Little puzzle game. I got I either the platinum that. or all these. I don't think it has a platinum. Okay. Cool. Yeah. But uh, that is all we have for this week's episode. Um, hopefully we get some news in the next week. If not, we'll talk more about the past, the future, and everything else in between. Um, but until next time, this has been Game Chat Tonight with the Huber Rebels. My name is Ethan. My name is Jordan. Until next time. We are the Huber Rebels. Wait, welcome to the Rebellion. Hey. Why do we suck at this so much? What?